As the planter nears the mine position, the command standby is given. At this time, the anchor distance weight is lowered and the locking pins are withdrawn from the trip hooks. When the anchor davit comes abreast of the line, the planting officer commands, let go. The anchor is always released an instant later than the mine. In planting the first mine, the planter passed the cable end to the anchored DB boat and proceeded straight to number 10 position, paying out cable. On dropping the mine, it kicks the stern away from the mine and makes a sweeping circle to starboard. Immediately after the mine is planted, one of the yawls moves up and takes aboard the mine buoy. A mine buoy is used to mark temporarily the position of each mine during the planting operation. It is attached to the mine with a mine buoy rope having submergence marks used to measure the depth of the mine. The submergence of the mine is read and recorded. A red flag is held over the mine so that its position can be plotted from shore stations. After the mine has been dropped, the Turk's head on the cable is hooked into its proper slot in the distribution box. The telephone is connected to the shore cable and the casemate notified that number 10 has been planted. The cable is joined to the distribution box with a watertight joint made in the same manner as the one on the junction box. Conductors are bared and joined. Rubber cement is then added. Two layers of rubber tape are wrapped around the joint. As before, tinfoil is used to distribute heat. The tinfoil used in vulcanizing the rubber is held in place with friction tape. Rubber cement on cotton waste is used as a source of heat for the vulcanizing. The completed joint is then inspected and, if found to be satisfactory, is covered with friction tape. Meanwhile, the mine planter completes its sweeping turn and approaches the DB boat from the opposite side, passing the cable to it and proceeding on to the position for mine number nine. While number 10 mine was being planted, number nine mine was being prepared. It is swung outboard and lowered to a planting position. Number nine mine buoy and its rope are held ready to be tossed overboard when the mine is tripped. The planter approaches the DB boat, this time on the opposite side. One of the two heaving lines attached to the cable with a clove hitch is thrown to the DB boat and the cable end is quickly pulled aboard and made fast. As the planter proceeds toward the line, number nine cable is paid out over the stern. As the mine planter nears the line, the command stand by is given and the locking pins are removed from the trip hook. On reaching the line, indicated by the marking buoys, the command let go sends mine number nine plunging into the water. The mine buoy indicates the location of the mine, and a yawl immediately comes up to measure the submergence and indicate the position of the mine to the observers on shore, so it can be indicated on the plot. On the DB boat, the cable is placed in its proper slot, and the casemate notified that mine number nine has been planted. Sometimes solid cast iron anchors are used. 
but those planted in this picture were of the automatic type. When a mine with an automatic anchor is planted, the mine remains on the surface, while the anchor and its distance weight sink rapidly. As the anchor descends, it pays out mooring rope from a built-in reel. Here, the cover has been removed to show the action of the reel. When the distance weight strikes the bottom, the distance line becomes slack. This causes the reel to stop turning by releasing the pull on the fall, allowing the spring to force it up against the tooth on the ratchet. This locks the reel, and since no more mooring rope can unreel, the mine is pulled underwater, a distance approximately equal to the length of the distance line. The remainder of the mines are planted in a similar manner, the planter maneuvering alternately to the left and the right of number 10 mine. Mines are dropped from alternate sides of the mine planter, permitting one mine to be prepared while the one on the opposite side is being planted. In this way, the next mine is always ready to plant. In turn, the cables are passed to the DB boat and connected to the distribution box. Note the trip hook action as the lanyard is pulled. When the last mine has been planted, the casemate is notified that the distribution box is about to be planted. After that, all messages to shore must be sent by radio. This shows the 20 completed watertight joints inside the distribution box. The distribution box cover is lowered in place and securely locked by driving split keys through slots in the studs of the box. A power winch is used to raise the heavy distribution box high enough to be hooked on the traveler of the overhead boom. The winch is now used to pull the traveler and the box forward to the bow. The cables are apt to bind on the rail of the boat and must be freed before the distribution box can move forward. When the traveler reaches the end of the boom, the distribution box is unhooked from the traveler and lowered to the bottom. This completes the planting of the group, and each mine is given an electrical test from the casemate on shore. Following a satisfactory test, the group is ready for service. As a safety precaution, all boats must leave the minefield during test. 